Canto 5. So I descended from the first enclosure down to the second circle, that which girdles less space, but grief more great, which goads to weeping. There, dreadful Mino stands, gnashing his teeth, examining the sins of those who enter. He judges and assigns as his tale twines. I mean that when the spirit born to evil appears before him, it confesses all and he, the connoisseur of sin, can tell the depth in hell appropriate to it. As many times as Minos wraps his tail around himself, that marks the sinner's level. Always there is a crowd that stands before him. Each soul in turn advances towards that judgment. They speak and hear, and they are cast below. Arresting his extraordinary task, Minos, as soon as he had seen me, said, Oh, you who reach this house of suffering, be careful how you enter, whom you trust. The gate is wide, but do not be deceived. To which my guide replied, But why protest? Do not attempt to block his fated path. Our passage has been willed above, where one who can do what he has willed and ask no more. Now notes of desperation have begun to overtake my hearing. Now I come where mighty lamentations beat against me. I reached a place where every light is muted, which bellows like the sea beneath a tempest, when it is battered by opposing winds. The hellish hurricane, which never rests, drives on spirits with its violence, wheeling and pounding. It harasses them. Then they come against the ruined slope. Then there are cries and wailing of lament, and there they curse the force of the divine. I learned that, that those who undergo this torment are damned because they sin within the flesh, subjecting reason to that rule of lust. And, as in the cold season starling's wings bear them along in broad and crowded ranks, so does that blast bear the guilty spirits. Now here, now there, now down, now up, it drives them. There is no hope that ever comforts them. No hope for rest, and none for lesser pain. And just as cranes in flight will chant their lays, arraying their long file across the air, so did the shades I saw approaching, borne by that assailing wind, lament and moan, so that I asked him, Master, who are those who suffer punishment in this dark air? The first of those about whose history you want to know, my master then told me, once ruled as empress over many nations, her vice and lust became so customary that she made license licit in her laws to free her from the scandal she has caused. She is Samiramis, who, of whom we read that she was Ninius' wife, and his successor she held the land the sultan now commands. That other spirit killed herself for love, and she betrayed the ashes of Cycles. The wanton Cleopatra follows next. See, Helen, for whose sake so many years of evil had to pass. See, great Achilles, who finally met love in his last battle. See, Paris, Tristan. And he pointed out the name to me of more than a thousand shades departed from life because of love. No sooner had I heard my teacher name the ancient ladies and knights than pity seized me, and I was like a man astray. My first words, poet, I should willingly speak to those two who go together there and seem so lightly carried by the wind, and he to me. You'll see when they draw closer to us, then you may appeal to them. By that love which impels them, they will come. No sooner had the wind bent them towards us than I urged on my voice, O oh, battered souls, if evil one does not forbid it, speak with us. Even if doves, then surmounted by desires, born, followed by their will, move through the air with wings uplifted still to their sweetest nest, those spirits left their ranks where Dido suffers, approaching us through the malignant air, so powerful and had been my loving cry. O living being, gracious and benign, Oh, through the darkened air we have come to visit our souls that stain the world with blood. If he who rules the universe were friend to us, 
then we would pray to him to give you peace, for you have pitied our atrocious state. Whatever pleases you to hear and speak will please us too, to hear and speak with you now while the wind is silent in this place. The land where I was born lies on that shore to which the Po, together with the waters that follow through it, descend to final rest. Love, that can quickly seize the gentle heart, took hold of him because of the fair body taken from me. How that he was done still wounds me. Love, that releases no beloved from loving, took hold of me so strongly through his beauty that, as you see, it has not left me yet. Love led the two of us unto one death, Kaina, once for him who took our life. These words were born across them to us. When I had listened to those injured souls, I bent my head and held it low until the poet asked me, What are you thinking? Then I replied, my words began, Alas, how many gentle thoughts, how deep a longing had led them to the agonizing past. Then... I addressed my speech again to them, and I began. Francesca, your afflictions move me to tears of sorrow and pity. But tell me, in the time of gentle sighs, with what and in what way did love allow you to recognize your still uncertain longings? And she to me, there is no greater sorrow than thinking back upon a happy time in misery, and this your teacher knows. Yet... If you long so much to understand the first root of our love, then I shall tell my tale to you as one who weeps and speaks. One day, to pass the time away, we read of Lancelot, of how love had overcome him. We were alone, and we suspected nothing. And time and time again that reading led our eyes to meet and made our faces pale, and yet one point alone defeated us. When we had read how the desired smile was kissed by one who is so true a lover, this one who never shall be parted by me, while all his body trembled, kissed my mouth. At Galahad, indeed, that book that he wrote it too, that day we read no more. And while one spirit said these words to me, the other wept, so that because of pity I fainted as if I had met my death. Then... I fell as a dead body falls.